Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, we'll be exploring collocation. So, it is an important subject to practice, as if done wrong, can sound unnatural and can reduce the quality of the conversation. So many problems with speech is that when you try and in increase or improve your speaking, you can include words or phrases that can sound unnatural. So, one of these can be with collocation. So let's go through. So what is collocation? Well, a bit like phrasal verbs, collocation refers to words, often two or three, that are commonly placed together. There may be grammatical reasons for this, but there may not be. It may be that, though long-term usage, it just sounds correct. Okay? So, over time, people have said it so often that it just has become part of the natural talk or natural speak of English language. It is one of the most important things to understand and practice when you learn the English language. Okay, so it's really important that you can get these correctly. Correct. So, here are some examples of some common verb to noun combinations to illustrate. To make. Okay, to make. To make the bed. To make money. To make a noise. To catch a cold, to catch a bus, to catch a fish. To come, to come late, to come on time, to come to a decision. To do homework, to do the shopping, to do nothing. Watch out. You cannot say, do the bed, as these words do not collocate together. Only certain words collocate together. So this is the main important thing, okay? Yeah, so the main important thing is to make sure you know what words go with what verb, okay? So certain nouns do not go with other verbs. You need to collocate them correctly, otherwise it will sound unnatural or just completely wrong. So you might be thinking, why are they important for speaking then? Well, when conversing with someone, you not only need to be using some less common words, you also need to show, to some extent, that you know what other words, these less common words, are usually used with. If you can do this, it shows that you have a deeper knowledge of the vocabulary. Remember that only certain words collocate together. If you use the wrong words together, they will sound wrong. They might not do this but it might be uncomfortable or awkward. So how do you learn them? Well, the problem with collocations is that there are so many different combinations that the words can go in. This makes it difficult to learn. The important thing is that when you learn a new word, you learn what words are commonly used in combination with it. Okay? So, for example, if you use a dictionary, you will have collocations within them. So, example, to have, to have. So, you are not just learning the word have, you are learning chunks of the language. You are also learning words that are usually used with the word have. Learning words this way is much more effective than learning words in isolation. If you learn words on their own, you are sure to make mistakes when you try to use them in sentences. So it's important, if you find a new word, a new, some new vocabulary, don't just learn the word, learn words around it, related to it, words that go with it, okay? It's especially important with verbs. So, the verb to have has so many different uses. To have lunch, to have a bath, to have a rest, to have a meeting, to have a haircut, to have a drink, have a good time, have a relationship, have a holiday, have sympathy, have a problem. So if you were just to learn the word have, then it would be quite hard to use that within conversation or writing because you have no idea how, how it goes with other words. However, if you, when learning, 
when you learn a new word, if you learn how it's used in a sentence or how it's used in speaking, what words are related to it, what words can be used in collocation with them, then you can learn huge amounts of chunks of the language with just one word. It'll make it a lot easier for you in the, longer, in the long run as well. So, business collocations. Collocations are often used in business and work settings. There are a number of forms including adjectives, nouns and other verbs that combine with keywords to form business expressions. Here are some of the collocation examples you will find on these pages. To key in a pin. To key in a pin. That means to press the buttons when you're putting your pin code in. To deposit a check. To deposit a check. So deposit means to put in. Okay? Hard earned money. Hard earned money. Hard earned means you worked really hard for that money. To close a deal. So to close a deal means to finish and complete a deal. Write up a contract. So to write up. So to write up means to um, create a contract. Uh, counterfeit money. So counterfeit money means fake money. Okay. So let's use some of these in a sentence. So just key in your PIN at the ATM and you can make a deposit. I'd like to deposit this check for $100. Once you get a job, you'll know what hard-earned money really is. I closed a deal on a new account last week. Let's write up your contract. Be on the lookout for counterfeit money in circulation. So if we go back, we've got all these. These are the used within the sentences. So look at them on their own. Okay, look at them on their own. And then look at how they were used within the sentences. Okay? Did the form of them change at all? Did they, um, did they change what you thought they meant within the sentence? So compare the two, okay? Common expressions. So collocations are often used as short expressions to describe how someone feels about a situation. So, positively encourage someone to do something, deeply regret the loss of someone, something, to be in an utter fury over something, to go to great lengths to do something. So these are some quick uses and expressions. Let's try and use them in sentences, because I think just on their own, they don't make that much sense. So let's use them within a sentence. We'd like to positively encourage you to buy this stock. So that means to make you happy to do it, okay? I deeply regret the loss of your loved one. I deeply regret. So that means you're really sorry. Tom's in an utter fury over the misunderstanding of his wife. Utter fury. Uh, was that utter fury? Yeah. yeah. So utter fury means complete anger and rage about the situation. He went to great lengths to explain the situation. So great lengths. Great lengths means made a big effort to try and explain the situation. He made a big effort. So here's a little bit of extra for you. Someone using sentences like this, consist consistently of course, would converse more easily with a native speaker. Another way to improve your knowledge of what words collocate is reading. The more you read, the more you will notice which words commonly go together. Okay. So just remember, if you are not sure if two words collocate together, 
you can use dictionaries or the internet to check. If you're 100% not sure, don't give it a go until you are sure. Otherwise, the, the conversation can become unnatural. But like here, like I said earlier, reading can really help because you can read, come up, find new vocabulary, and then research what the words go with, um, what their related words are, how they can be used in sentences and in speaking. So reading can really help you progress in speaking as well. Great. Thank you very much for listening to this lesson. I look forward to you in the next lesson. Thank you. Bye.